Want to try hammering on your spinnings? I'll show you some tips. So this is kind of a specialized and fun uh, little video on an approach that I developed with uh, my metal spinnings is on a lot of the assembled pieces, I like to uh, spin components and then uh, solder them together and put uh, kind of a contrasting hammer texture on the piece. Uh, in addition to sometimes on the pieces, you can see even some of the lines left over from the spinning. So I was just going to talk a little bit about that, where that inspiration came from and everything. Um, I was fortunate to be able to uh, visit Japan. And while I was there, I picked up this great uh, cast and machined uh, pewter cup. And I noticed that on the bottom was this uh, hammered texture, which I thought was a really great way of kind of resolving the underside or the foot of the vessel in contrast to the cast texture and the machined interior. Uh, so that gave me some ideas. And uh, one of the things that often is a problem with the, uh, the bottoms of spinnings is uh, when they're sitting, that they, uh, they might not be perfectly flat and they might not kind of sit uh, regularly or flat on a table or surface or something like that. So with uh, hammering this bottom, what it's going to do is it's going to spread out the metal a little bit and cause it to become concave and move up slightly into the interior of the vessel. So then there will just be an outside lip and it'll just kind of sit nicely. A um, couple things before I get into that, I just want to talk about hammers. And there's um, hammers are classified by their peen or the shape of the head here. So for example, this is a pretty typical like ball peen hammer, and it's called that because of the, the ball there. And then uh, a contrasting type of hammer would be a cross peen. And so you can see this where the, uh, the end of the hammer is a cross or a line. And the main uh, functional differences of these is that a ball peen hammer, when it strikes metal, will spread the metal uniformly out, almost like in a ripple from where it impacted the metal, as opposed to a cross peen, when it strikes the metal, it'll move the metal perpendicular from uh, that line of the, uh, the cross peen. So let me just kind of demonstrate what I do a lot of times on the underside of pieces is, um, put that cross peen texture there to just kind of finish out this part. And a lot of times too, from the spinning, you're left with where the follower blocks are and things like that. So it's, it's a nice way of kind of resolving that. And you need to hammer against something that'll support your piece while you're hammering on it. Uh, you might or might not have a metal working studio or want to get one set up or something like that. Uh, but oftentimes you can make your own tools. This is just a, um, a round bar of steel that then I polished up the end. And we've talked a little bit about polishing and the, the importance of having the surface of your tools, or in this case, what this is called is a stake, um, is that whatever the surface of your hammer or tool is, is what will be imparted to the piece that you're hammering against. So if your, um, your hammer or your stake isn't polished, it'll pick up all the little dings. You can see in this old anvil, all the little dings and textures, that'll end up in the piece if you were hammering directly against that. So let me just show you sort of hammering the, uh, the foot of a, of a spinning here. So you can either set stakes like this in holders. In this case, I'm just going to put it on the frame of the anvil there. And I have the cross peen and the interior foot of the, the vessel is supported. And I just start kind of concentrically hammering. And texturing with the hammer is, you know, any kind of final finishing on a piece is really a personal aesthetic decision. So um, you can develop your own approaches, your own textures. I'm not gonna do this whole piece just for the sake of time, but you can get a sense of how the patterning is starting to develop on the spinning and how those hammer marks then are kind of obliterating what's left of uh, the spinning lines left over from the uh, follower block. So another way of uh, texturing the spinnings is if you happen to have an anvil is working off the different areas or parts of an anvil. So in this case, this is the horn of the anvil and it's great for getting into pieces and supporting it. 
Um, with the, the piece that I showed you here, this piece was not fully supported, and so the hammering slowly just sort of caved in parts of the metal, and it grew into kind of uh, an organic form. So I can show you a little bit of that here with this spinning. So if it's on the horn of the anvil, not all of the metal necessarily is supported, and you can go in and start kind of, kind of denting the metal, and you can just sort of follow that pattern and let it develop and just be kind of kind of playful with it. And you can hear when it's different, when it's right up against the anvil, you're not gonna get as much of the metal sort of forming or changing. But you can see pretty quickly, you can develop this organic texture or form that's in contrast to the spinnings. And you can just sort of experiment for your own and get a, get a sense of the, the plasticity of the metal and how to move it around and, and what kind of other, other textures you might be interested in applying to it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.